through the window. I didn't think I would escape. I was just frozen, helpless. Nothing you could do. That property is a pretty remote property. Uh, it's about it's several, uh, several acres. I can hear his footsteps, and I'm getting closer. The evil in his eyes, I've never seen before. Potential suspects were whittled down. Okay, so I'm going to talk briefly about the court hearings that come up between Lori and her husband, Chad Guy Daybell. But first, I want to kind of point out here the different uh, demeanor of Lori Vallow between her first uh, court appearances versus now. And you can see it appears that the reality of how serious this is and the fact that she's not getting away with her kids being under the ground like she expected. So to your left is the most recent uh, court appearance that Lori had where she had several charges added on to what she already had. And you can see she's kind of mopey. Her demeanor's completely different. She's very um, disappointed, sad, and I think a lot of that had to do with her son Colby was there. Whereas to the right, you can see where she was in court before. She's a bit smirky, confident, cocky, and she felt quite invincible. At this time, people are looking for her kids and she's telling people and so are uh, Chad as well that they are safe and they tell um, her attorney says that they're gonna fight aggressively and she does this little smirky uh, nod that's uh, yeah we are gonna fight this like she has something to fight with so it's very clear at this point now that we know what we know that she is quite a manipulator quite a, a deceitful little thing and the only thing she's concerned about is getting this over with she thinks that there's not going to be any way that they're going to ever find out what happened to Tylee and JJ and I think she also believes that she was going to get out of jail pretty quickly and be back to building that new life with her new husband Chad Debo. They had plans to build a new Zion with the firstborn. And right here, this is that face I was talking about. That cocky little smirk. I'm going to fight this. But yesterday, that cocky little smirk was gone. She had tears flowing. And I doubt, uh, I don't know a whole lot about law, but I do realize that at one time, Lori and Chad had the same attorney and at this point will not or should not have the same attorney um, due to the fact it can be a, a can there's a conflict several probably now guys I'm in a hurry I'm just doing a quick update on this I'm sorry I didn't have time to do more research for you so I'm gonna run both court um, both by Lori and Chad on this one video and let you watch it and maybe I'll have time to do some commentary and I will. All right, so we're going to do it a little bit backwards. So this one is from Chad Daybell's court appearance today. Here we go. Initial appearance on this same case number. Mr. Daybell, can you hear me okay? Yes. Mr. Daybell, do you read, speak, and understand the English language? I do. Mr. Daybell, have you had enough time uh, to meet with your attorney in preparation for today's hearing? Yes. Mr. Daybell, did you fill out a notification of rights form prior to the hearing today? Yes. I didn't hear you, Mr. Daybell. Can you yes, speak? I did. Sorry. Mr. Daybell, uh, do you understand all of your legal rights here today? I do. Mr. Daybell, did you also receive a copy of the motion to amend, the order to amend, as well as the amended criminal complaint that was filed yesterday here with the Fremont County Court? I did. And you had a chance to review that with your counsel, is that correct? Yes. 
Mr. Pryor, uh, does your client want a formal reading or can I just uh, read the actual charges informally? Judge, at this time, we will waive formal reading of the, uh, the complaint in this case, Your Honor. Thank you. I will proceed then. I'm uh, going to read the amended criminal complaint as it pertains to the counts. It was filed, like I said, on June 30th, 2020. Uh, under count one, the charge is destruction, alteration, or concealment of evidence, which is a violation of Idaho Code 182603, a felony. It's punishable by up to five years in the state penitentiary and or up to a $10,000 fine. It alleges that the defendant, Chad Guy Daybell, on or between the 22nd day of September 2019 and the 9th day of June 2020, in the county of Fremont, State of Idaho, did willfully conceal and or did aid and abet another to willfully conceal the human remains of J.J. Vallow knowing that said remains were to be produced, were about to be produced, used, and or discovered as evidence in a felony proceeding, inquiry and or investigation authorized by law with the intent to prevent it from being so produced, used, and or discovered. Count two is a charge of conspiracy to commit destruction, alteration, or concealment of evidence, a felony under Idaho Code 182603, and 181701. It's punishable by up to five years in the state penitentiary and or up to a $10,000 fine. It alleges the defendants, Chad Guy Daybell, Lori Vallow, and or another person or persons on or about or on or between the 22nd of September 2019 and the 9th day of June 2020 in the county of Fremont, state of Idaho, and elsewhere did willfully and knowingly combine, conspire, confederate, and agree to commit destruction, alteration, or concealment of evidence in a felony proceeding, inquiry, and or investigation authorized by law, with the intent to prevent it from being so produced, used, and or discovered, to wit, the human remains of J.J. Hallow, which is in violation of Idaho Code Section 182603-181701. Overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy to commit destruction, alteration, or concealment of evidence and to affect the objects thereof, one or more of the following overt acts were committed by one or more of the subjects of the conspiracy within Fremont County or elsewhere in the state of Idaho. Number one. On or about November 26, 2019, Chad Guy Daybell misrepresented the nature of his relationship with Lori Vallow. So the judge is talking about the time that the police went to Lori Vallow's townhome. Chad Daybell was there. They asked Chad about the whereabouts of the children. Chad was married to Lori at the time, but he didn't know her phone number. He didn't know where the kids were, and he said he didn't know who they were. How he thought he could get away with that, I have no clue, but let's continue on. While questioned by the Rexburg Police Department during a lawful investigation regarding the whereabouts of J.J. Vallow. On or about November, t number two, on or about November 26, 2019, Chad Guy Daybell contacted Melanie Gibb via phone for the purpose of requesting and or encouraging non-cooperation with law enforcement's lawful investigation regarding the whereabouts of J.J. Vallow. Okay, so Melanie Gibb saw J.J. Vallow for the last time, she says, and September 22nd or 23rd. When the police come to the house looking for the children November 26th of 2019, Chad calls Melanie Gibb after the police leave. He asks Melanie Gibb to lie to police and tell them that Melanie Gibb had JJ with her, as did Lori. They both ask Melanie to lie to police. But Melanie Gibb doesn't talk to the police until weeks later in December. Interesting. Let's continue. Number three. On or about November 26, 2019, Lori Vallow provided a false and or misleading 
physical location of J.J. Vallow to law enforcement during a lawful investigation. Number four, on or about November 26th, 2019, Lori Vallow contacted Melanie Gibb via phone for the purpose of requesting and or encouraging non-cooperation with law enforcement's lawful investigation regarding the whereabouts of J.J. Vallow. Number five, on or about November 26, 2019, Lori Vallow contacted Melanie Gibb via phone for the purpose of requesting and or encouraging Melanie Gibb to prepare, prepare and or present false evidence to law enforcement regarding the whereabouts of J.J. Vallow during a lawful investigation. Number six, on or between the dates of February 30th, 2020 and June 9th, 2020, Lori Vallow refused and or did fail to comply with a court order to produce her minor child to wit, J.J. Vallow. I think everybody remembers that. That was back when the police found Lori and her new husband, Chad Daybell, in Hawaii having a great time at the beach when they pull her over and they arrest her because they, she refused to produce the children. At that point, people were really wondering whether or not the kids were still alive. Chad Daybell had actually abandoned his own family, although they're adults, leaving them to deal with all the warrants and the detectives and investigating why they were having a great time in Hawaii. All right, let's continue. To the Rexburg Police Department or the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare in Madison County case number CV3320-45. Count number three, destruction, alteration, or concealment of evidence, which is a felony under Idaho law, uh, violation of Idaho Code 18-2603. It's punishable by up to five years in the state penitentiary and up to a $10,000 fine. It alleges that the defendant, Chad Guy Daybell, on or between the 9th of day of September 2019 and the 9th day of June 2020, in the county of Fremont, state of Idaho, did willfully destroy, alter, and or conceal, and or did aid and abet another to willfully destroy, alter, and or conceal the human remains of Tylee Ryan knowing that said remains were about to be produced, used, and or discovered as evidence in a felony proceeding, inquiry, and or investigation authorized by law, with the intent to prevent it from being so produced, used, and or discovered. Count four, conspiracy to commit dis destruction, alteration, or concealment of evidence, also a felony under Idaho law, a violation of Idaho Code 18-2603 and 18-1701. It's punishable by up to five years in the state penitentiary and or up to a $10,000 fine. It alleges that the defendants, Chad Guy Daybell, Lori Vallow, and or another person or persons on or between the 9th day of September 2019 and the 9th day of June 2020 in the county of Fremont, state of Idaho, and or elsewhere did willfully and knowingly combine, conspire, confederate, and agree to commit destruction, alteration, or concealment of evidence in a felony proceeding, inquiry, and or investigation authorized by law with the intent to prevent it from being so produced, used, and or discovered, to wit, the human remains of Tylee Ryan, which is in violation of Idaho Code 18, 2603 and 18 Okay, so you're hearing him mention that both Lori and Chad's name uh, being charged with this, but he also mentions that there's a possibility that there's one other person or even more. So this means there's a possibility, maybe there's more going on with this that they discovered quite recently. And, and in time, we'll only find out. But we can pretty much bet that Alex Cox most likely would be one of those. So, continuing on. Overt acts. In furtherance of the conspiracy to commit destruction, alteration, or concealment of evidence, and to affect the objects thereof, one or more of the following overt acts were committed by one or more of the subjects of the conspiracy within Fremont County and or elsewhere. 
Number one, on or about September 9th, 2019, Chad Guy Daybell sent text messages to another for the purpose of disguising the destruction, alteration, and or concealment of the human remains of Tylee Ryan on his property. They're probably uh, referring to the text message um, where Chad Daybell is speaking about a raccoon that he shot on his property. Or they might have something more significant than that that they haven't shared. So, all right, going, moving forward. Number two. On or about November 26, 2019, Lori Vallow provided false information to law enforcement regarding Tylee Ryan's attendance at BYU-Idaho and or her current housing situation. Number three, on or between the dates of January 30th, 2020 and June 9th, 2020, Lori Vallow refused and or did fail to comply with the court order to produce her minor child, Tylee Ryan, to the Rexburg Police Department or the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare in Madison County case number CV 3320-45. Mr. Daybell, all of those uh, penalties could run consecutively one after the other, or they could run concurrently at the same time. Do you understand that? You're muted uh, there at the jail. If you could unmute that, please. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Daybell, do you also understand uh, all four counts, the allegations that have been brought against you? Yes. Do you have any questions about the amended criminal complaint, Mr. Pryor or Mr. Daybell? No questions at this time from either myself or Mr. Daybell, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pryor. We've gone through the rights. We've also gone through the amended criminal complaint. At this point, the court is not going to readdress bond. That will remain as currently set with the conditions related thereto. Um, there's also a, currently a preliminary hearing that is set for August 3rd and 4th. Uh, it's my understanding that we're going to continue forward with that preliminary hearing as anticipated. Is that correct, Mr. Wood? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Pryor? At this time, Judge, that is correct. All right. We'll continue with that on the schedule. Um, is there anything else that we need to take up today, uh, Mr. Wood? No. Mr. Pryor, just so we're clear, um, your client is waiting with this amended criminal complaint to a speedy preliminary hearing, and that preliminary hearing is still going to be held on August 3rd and 4th. Is that correct? A valid waiver of his preliminary hearing within the statutory time. And at this point, Judge, uh, barring um, some, some difficulties with discovery, I anticipate a preliminary hearing on the 3rd of August to commence promptly. Right. I think that takes care of everything. Something I've missed. All right, that will be uh, the end of today's initial appearance. I appreciate everybody's appearing. We will be adjourned until further order of the court and until that prelim. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Okay, so he has quite a few charges piling up, and we can probably uh, expect more, hopefully. We will see um, a little bit more serious charges come forth. We know that Tylee and JJ have been found in the back of Chad Daybell's property. And this was on June 9th of 2020. At the time that they were found, Lori Vallow was behind bars while Chad Daybell was running free. Now I did notice that Chad Daybell is wearing a uh, shirt and tie, whereas Lori was wearing uh, jail attire so i'm wondering if he's out on bond i haven't had chance to actually check up on that so i'm curious if anybody knows definitely drop it in the comments below but it appears that uh chad daybell is understanding that right now he has nothing more to smirk about like he did before he he realizes just like lori does this is a very serious matter and pretty much it's going to boil down to whether or not Chad and Lori decide to stick together throughout this or um, start pointing fingers to take those consecutive years down. Or I guess they said they can run 
can you know together as well but still uh, I think uh, hopefully we will see a little bit more come to light if the two decide to bargain against one another I do believe that they are starting to realize that these um, predictions and revelations that they've had are not working out for them I think they also realize that Melanie Gibb is doing the right thing and that's uh, about time she, that she does walk in the right light because her judge of character is quite not get great we've all been there a time or two so um, I'm quite interested in knowing if they're going to be able to do this uh, DNA testing because at the, at the very beginning when they did locate Tylee and, um, and Tylee on the property they did the autopsy and I've heard through um, a few of the documents I've seen where they actually kind of questioned whether they're going to do DNA or not which was uh, that was mind blowing in itself but it's not like it's a first. I mean, that costs a lot of money. And these smaller um, departments, they try to save a dollar where they can, even if it's at the cost of somebody's justice. Sarah Galloway out of Arizona is one example of that. Another lady that we covered, Bonnie, is another example. So hopefully they are doing a toxicology uh, report. Sorry, guys, it's almost 4th of July. and they are just doing this stuff but anyways let me go ahead and run Lori Daybell Vallow's um, court experience for you I want you to pay attention to her demeanor it's important and uh, pay attention to who else is there and I think uh, her son Colby did the right thing made her face the reality of what is really happening. All right, here we go. 2020 is uh, case number CR 2220-838 on an amended criminal complaint. There are two counts that have been alleged in the criminal complaint. I'm going to summarize those. Count one is the allegation of the charge of conspiracy to commit destruction alteration or concealment of evidence that is a felony under idaho law a violation of idaho code 1826.03 and 18-1701 it is punishable by up to five years in the state penitentiary and or up to a ten thousand dollar fine miss day bell it alleges that uh the following the defendants chad guy day bell lori vallow and or another person or persons on or between the 22nd day of September 2019 and the 9th day of June 2020 in the county of Fremont, state of Idaho and elsewhere did willfully and knowingly combine, conspire, confederate and agree to commit destruction, alteration or concealment of evidence in a felony proceeding inquiry and or investigation authorized by law with the intent to prevent it from being so produced used and or discovered to wit the human remains of jj vallow which is in violation of idaho code section 1826.03 and 1817.01 overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy to commit destruction alteration or concealment of evidence and to affect the objects thereof one or more of the following overt acts were committed by one or more of the subjects of the conspiracy within Fremont County or elsewhere in the state of Idaho. Number one, on or about November 26, 2019, Chad Guy Bell misrepresented the nature of his relationship with Lori Vallow while questioned by the Rexburg Police Department during a lawful investigation regarding the whereabouts of JJ Vallow. Number two, on or about November 26, 2019, Chad Guy Bell contacted Melanie Gibb via phone for the purpose of requesting and or encouraging non-cooperation with law enforcement's lawful investigation. Okay, watch again closely when he mentions Lori Gibb. Melanie Gibb via phone for the purpose of requesting and or encouraging non-cooperation 
with law enforcement's lawful investigation regarding the whereabouts of J.J. Vallow. Number three, on or about November 26, 2019, Lori Vallow provided a false and or misleading physical location of J.J. Vallow to law enforcement during a lawful investigation. Number four, on or about November 26, 2019, Lori Vallow contacted Melanie Gibb via phone for the purpose of requesting and or encouraging non-cooperation with law enforcement's lawful investigation regarding the whereabouts of J.J. Vallow. Number five, on or about November 26, 2019, Lori Vallow contacted Melanie Gibb via phone for the purpose of requesting and or encouraging Melanie Gibb to prepare and or present false evidence to law enforcement regarding the whereabouts of J.J. Vallow during a lawful investigation. Number six, on or between the dates of January 30th, 2020 and June 9th, 2020, Lori Vallow refused and or did fail to comply with a court order to produce her minor child to wit, J.J. Vallow to the Rexburg Police Department or the Alamo Department of Health and Welfare in Madison County case number CV3320-45. I am quite certain at that point when Lori looks toward the monitor and camera, she sees her son sitting there hearing everything that they're saying beside his wife. And I think she can see Kobe's very disturbed, angry. It's a mix of emotions going on with Kobe. Parts of Kobe sees his mother there, the mother that he knew being accused of something while he's fighting with himself that the fact that JJ and Tylee are no longer here. So the conflict in that her son is real. Now Lori appears to start crying and what that tear is from is anybody's guess. You know, is it because she's disappointed her son that she realizes that she's not getting away with this and there's no revelation that's going to save her butt or does she realize she made this huge mistake believing in this guy and now two of her kids are gone and now she's behind bars and she you know Kobe's watching her I don't know Miss Daybell do you understand the alleged charge the allegation as well as the maximum penalty in count one She said yes, Your Honor. All right, we'll move on to count two. Then count two is also a charge of conspiracy to commit destruction, alteration, or concealment of evidence, a felony, a violation of Idaho Code Section 1826.03 and 1817.01. It's punishable by that same amount up to five years in the state penitentiary and up to a $10,000 fine. It alleges the defendants, Chad Guy Daybell, Lori Vallow, and or another person or persons on or between the 9th day of September 2019 and the 9th day of June 2020 in the county of Fremont, state of Idaho, and or elsewhere did willfully and knowingly combine, conspire, confederate, and agree to commit destruction, alteration, or concealment of evidence in a felony proceeding inquiry and or investigation authorized by law with the intent to prevent it from being so produced used and or discovered to wit the human remains of Tylee Ryan which is in violation of Idaho code sections 1826.03 and 1817.01 overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy to commit destruction alteration or concealment of evidence and to affect the objects thereof one or more of the following overt acts were committed by one or more of the subjects of the conspiracy within Fremont County and or elsewhere. Number one, on or about September 9th, 2019, Chad Guy Daybell sent text messages to another for the purpose of disguising the destruction, alteration, and or concealment of the human remains of Tylee Ryan on his property. 
Number two, on or about November 26, 2019, Lori Vallow provided false information to law enforcement regarding Tylee Ryan's attendance at BYU-Idaho and or her current housing situation. Number three, on or between the dates of January 30th, 2020 and June 9th, 2020, Lori Vallow refused and or did fail to comply with a court order to produce her minor child, Tylee Ryan, to the Rexburg Police Department or the Department of the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare in Madison County case number CV3320-45. Ms. Daybell, do you understand the, the charge in count two and the maximum penalty associated with that? Yes. Ms. Daybell, do you understand that those two penalties could run consecutively, one after the other, or they could run concurrent, meaning at the same time? Yes. Ms. Daybell, based upon the uh, the charges that have been brought against you uh, and the fact that they are felony charges, you're entitled to a preliminary hearing or a probable cause hearing. Uh, Mr. Wood and Mr. Means, we have discussed uh, this matter prior to going on the record. It's my understanding that both are in agreement that a preliminary hearing should take no more than two days. Is that correct, Mr. Wood? Yes. Mr. Means, do you agree? I do, Your Honor. All right, looking at the calendar the court has, the court is available on August 10th and 11th. Does that work for a counsel for the state? Yes. Mr. Means, does that also work for you? It does, Your Honor. All right, we'll schedule the preliminary hearing to begin right at 9 a.m. on August 10th and continue if necessary to August 11th. Ms. Daybell, uh, I have set your bond in the arrest warrant that you have there in front of you, uh, and I've set bond at $1 million. Uh, Mr. Means, uh, there, I'm not going to take up that matter here today. If you'd like to file any motion to deal with that in the future, that can be dealt with. Do you wish to be heard on that matter? Yeah, I, I, Your Honor, we can reserve the matter for a later time. All right. Uh, if bail is posted in the amount of $1 million. Um, the following conditions will be uh, put in stone that need to be followed uh, along with posting bond if Miss Daybell is going to be released. Um, number one, she must sign a waiver of extradition provided by the Fremont County Office of the Sheriff. The prosecutor must approve the waiver of extradition by his signature on the waiver. A copy of the waiver of extradition must be filed with the court. Number two, the defendant shall reside within the boundaries of Bonneville, Jefferson, Madison, and Fremont counties within the state of Idaho. The defendant shall not leave these counties for any reason. Number three, the defendant shall provide the court with her current address and shall not change her address without notifying the court. Number four, the defendant shall keep regular contact with her attorney. Number five, the defendant shall appear for all court appearances. Number six, the defendant shall obey all laws of the state of Idaho and the United States. Number seven, the defendant will sign up for pretrial services with Fremont County and check in with pretrial services on a weekly basis or as directed by the pretrial services. Number eight, the defendant shall have absolutely no contact with the victim's families and or any of the state's witnesses in this case. Contact shall include, but not be limited to verbal contact, written contact, visual contact, te text messaging contact, email or internet contact, and or telephonic contact. Such contact shall also include contact through third parties. Number nine, the defendant must wear an ankle monitor 24 hours a day, seven days a week. She must have the ankle monitor in place before she is able to be released from the Madison County Jail, which is holding her for Fremont County. Any violations of the geographical limitations imposed herein must be reported immediately to the Fremont County Sheriff's Office and the court. Number 10, the defendant is hereby notified that while under the order to wear an ankle monitor, intentionally leaving the area of restriction, except for the purpose of obtaining emergency medical care, may be prosecuted as a crime of escape and subject the defendant to penalties under Idaho Code Sections 18-2505 and or Idaho Code Section 
2506 and Idaho Criminal Rule 46E3. Uh, Mr. Means, does your client have any questions about the, the conditions of bond? Were she to post bond or be eligible to post bond? No, Your Honor. All right, I have received a notification of rights form that has been signed by Ms. Daybell. Uh, Mr. Means, uh, I think I received this before she had a chance to meet with you. Uh, you've uh, reviewed this notification of rights as well, is that correct? I have, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Daybell, just so we're clear, you've, uh, you're being represented by Mr. Means and you're retaining him privately, is that correct? Yes. Mr. Means, um, the court is uh, inclined to ask one question here today. Number one, uh, because the, the charge that's been listed here in the information um, does pertain to conspiracy, uh, Mr. Means, have you ever represented any of the alleged co-conspirators that are set forth in the criminal complaint? No, Your Honor, other than Mr. Daybell. Okay. All right. With that, uh, Your Honor, I need to interject. At a, a bail reduction here in Madison County, Mr. Means did represent to the court that he was also representing Mr. Vallow, now he, or Mr. Daybell. He, he didn't represent, there was no criminal matter against him at that time, but I, I do think that's appropriate to know. All right. It sounds like there's a disagreement there. Uh, what I'm going to ask the parties to do. Ultimately, uh, there's a question of whether or not a conflict exists, and I'm going to ask each of the parties to, uh, to submit what their uh, request is regarding that issue so that the court can make a decision as soon as is possible and as soon as is necessary uh, based upon that issue. Um, anything else that we need to take up here today, Mr. Wood? Not from the state. Mr. Means, anything else that we need to take up here today? No, Your Honor. All right. Madam Clerk, is there anything that I've forgotten here? All right, we'll be in recess uh, pending. Mr. Wood, did you raise your hand there? No. Okay. We'll be in recess pending that hearing on August the 10th and 11th. Thank you all for appearing here today. We'll close up. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay, it was very heartbreaking to watch Colby sit there and have to go through that because he didn't only just lose his brother and sister, he's lost his mother, he's lost his father figure, he's really lost a lot. And on top of that, losing everybody, he's having to see a reminder of that every day, every time he has to go to court, every time he turns on the internet. So I'm hoping that somebody that loves Colby is there for him. This is a very traumatic experience for that young guy. And uh, I think he's a good kid. Now I've reached out to him, hopefully he'll um, have other people reach out to him that can actually connect with him and help him out uh, wherever he needs help. So I know it's gonna be a lot of support system he's gonna need. While during this, um, Lori appears to be crying. This is the first tears that the woman has shed. She has taken her husband's life and now her two children, she has been a conspiracy, good Lord, if I can say it, she has a conspiracy, I don't know how to word it, I'm not a law person. Um, anyway, she has something to do with those two children and their death. Forgive me guys, I'm in a hurry trying to put this out. My husband comes home tomorrow and so anyways, this case means a lot to me as well, but I feel like she realizes now, just like Chad, that everything's not going to be okay. Everything's far from being okay. In fact, it can only get worse. There's no looking, you know, at the rainbow. We're going to get past it. The next day's going to be better. The next day's going to be worse at least for a period of time. And I'm only hoping that these investigators that are involved with this case will do everything they can to make up for the horrible uh, attention they had to this case when Charles was begging for help.
Not only Charles, Brandon was too, which I'm covering in this next video I'm working on, part three of Connecting the Dots. Now, I'm not going to say much more on this, guys, other than it was nice to see the monster had tears coming from her eyes. I'm going to send love out to their family. I just hope everything, I hope they can heal from this, and I'm, I'm just hoping the best for Tylee and JJ and that they're resting in heaven. Guys, don't forget we still have people missing. We have Dulce. We have Jasmine Robinson. I am pushing these faces. Please, please, please share their face. I hope everybody has a great and safe 4th of July. Remember, COVID's still out there. Be safe, guys. Love you. Thanks for caring. See you soon.